Hello friends, I'm back with another video. My name is Dennis and I'm a software engineer and I do videos on tech stuff, coding and automation. If you get any value from this video, please consider subscribing. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to automate a table with active thesis. Um, if you're not familiar with AI table, that AI essentially a tool for uh, collecting uh, data and transforming it. And you can use your data to create um, AI agents uh, for CRM and project management and for anything, uh, pretty much inc including your personal needs. Okay, so I'm logged into my account here. Um, so if, essentially when you work with AI table, you have data sheets such as this one and the way to add a data sheet is from here. And if you can add it uh, from this menu, uh, new data sheet, uh, in this case, add a movie new data sheet and from here you can pretty much create a new view and you create a Gantt charts a gallery and it gives you like a little preview here on the right side uh, you can create a column uh, in this case I have an ID a title um, you can change the field settings you can name it however you want yeah you can you have a whole host of uh, field types that you can select from including long text select and so forth so it's very flexible in that regard. Um, as you can see here, I have the year as a number. So if you do the field settings, I have it a number. So you're uh, pretty much um, defining uh, your column, just like when you're working with data database. So I have a release date, I have a poster URL, and I can add new columns from here um, if I want to. So there's two types of automation um, that you can do here. One is built in on top of already an automatic that you get when you um, create a data sheet is if you go up to the top, there's this automation uh, that you can create from, uh, which basically counts your automation number um, depending on what account, what account you have. So um, you can create it from here and you can say when this happens, then I want an action to occur. So um, in this case, when a form is submitted, um, if you've created a form out of your data sheet, um, if a record matches a condition, so if you can do some conditional type of thing here, uh, when a record is created or uh, a schedule based. So every time um, there's every hour, every day, every week or every month, you can do sort of um, your scheduling over here. So. Yeah, so you can do it from this one, this way, or you can use it externally via a API. So the way to do it via API is to go up on the top. So instead of automation, you can close that down. You can go up here to the API, and you, know, you see right here where um, you can show your AI API token and use the field ID. So uh, in this way, we can you have a way of um, uh, getting your records uh, via this API. So in from here, you can pretty much uh, get records. Uh, it will show you how to do it in curl, or if you want to do it in JavaScript or Python, it give you the code to um, pretty much do it. Uh, for the most part, uh, curl, uh, if you can ac have access to the HTTP, you can pretty much uh, uh, interact with this API and you have to do all these um, passing in the header. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Um, if you wanna add records, you can do it this way as well. Um, in this case, I'm gonna pass the data and this is what it is expected um, to, that's to come in. So if you want to update records, you can also pass in here and this is the, the uh, field key that you wanna update. Um, delete record and upload attachment. So you have an attachment um, column, then you can you can use this as well. So uh, we're gonna be sticking with um, interacting from active pieces since they already have a an integration um, set up. It's one of the the pieces um, that they have available already. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so before we jump into active pieces, I want to show you how you, how you can get your API key, which is pretty much simple. If you go down to the top, uh, to the bottom right, uh, where your 
um, name is. I'm just going to click on it and go to my settings. And it's going to be on the developer um, section over here. So you can just copy this and use it uh, basically when you create a connection in Active Pieces. So I'm back here in Active Pieces. Um, so I'm going to create a new flow and select start from scratch as always. So we're gonna select a trigger. Um, so one thing that we can do here is either <clears throat> we can do something um, if something happens on the AI table side, or we have we can have a workload we can, where we can have a schedule-based approach or web hooks. So we have multiple options that we can use. Um, in this case, we're gonna go with um, the AI table. So the trigger is if a new record um, is get triggered, then we're going to do something about it. So you can create a new connection or you can use an existing one. So when you do create a new connection, you're basically you're going to copy your developer API key um, over here, and then you get it saved. Uh, since I already have it, I'm going to select it. And now you need your data sheet ID. Um, so if you go back to the, uh, if you go back to the um, AI table, uh, the way to look for your datasheet ID is if you look at the URL, it starts uh, with a DS on the top. So it tells you here the DS and then make sure you only copy the first part of the segment. Um, you're going to notice here there's like, a, there's like a forward slash and there's like another ID here, which is the view. So the view here is pretty much this grid view that you can see here um, since you can create different views uh, you can pretty much interact with this data sheet in different views and different ways so so we're going to grab the first part over here which is the very top and just going to copy that and i'm going to go back to active pieces and paste that over here all right so now we can move on to the next step um, so in this case uh, in our example we're going to be doing a query uh, on another API that's available um, for from Rapid API, so I just picked this one just for this uh, for this demo. Just want to showcase how to make an HTTP request uh, to another API that requires um, some sort of authentication uh, via header uh, via headers. So what we're gonna do here is go back to Active Pieces and add a new um, piece over here. So if you want to interact with an external API, you have a couple of options. Um, one is to do send an HTTP uh, request via this piece, or you can do a, a <laughs> lower level, which is to do a code where you can um, use libraries like Axios to interact, and then you can proceed and, and do anything with that data that comes back Okay, we're gonna go with the easiest route, which is the HTTP. Um, if you flip back to the uh, Rapid API uh, documentation here, the way you can interact with this is with this URL and then with this method called, it's a get method. So we're gonna copy, um, actually we're gonna go to the movies and we're gonna go and copy this URL over here. We're gonna, um, select send http request the method is going to be a get and then url is going to be this um, as far as the header is concerned uh, we're going to be grabbing the uh, this two keys over here it's called it's the rapid api key and then the next one is the rapid api host all right and then we're going to copy the key from over here. It's a lot of copying in the beginning. Pasting. And copying it from here. Since Breaking Bad is not actually a, t a movie, um, it came back with a different result. It's not what I expected, but nonetheless, it's showing you um, a query for this particular uh, keyword that we have. But um, instead of hard coding the query over here, we're going to use the 
um, the new record that we retrieve from AI table as a parameter. So we're going to change this to pull up the information from the new record. And in this case, we're going to insert the title. Okay. All right. So once we get that in, we can hit, we can hit the test. All right. So we're going to hit the test and see what we get back. In this case, we have a query of Jurassic Park and we have sources, uh, original title is that. And obviously there's multiple Jurassic Parks, so we're getting um, multiple results from this query. Um, I think we're just gonna take the first one in this case um, and then just kind of play around with it and see what we get. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and resume this and um, add a piece of this flow. Um, so we're going to go and add an AI table uh, piece. Um, the action is going to be, um, so this multiple actions that you that you have over here, you can either create a new one or update, or you, you can do even a find on the record. In our case, we're just going to update the record that we have. We're going to use the same connection and we're going to use the data sheet from the first step. We're just going to copy it over here. And paste it over here. I just wish that the first step result returns the data sheet ID back, but it doesn't. So we're just going to hard code that. But for record ID, we can definitely grab that from the first one. And as you can see here, so we're just going to insert that. OK, once we got those two um, in place, now we can um, either grab and reuse the same one that we use for the query, or we're going to use the title that we got from the results via the HTTP requests from the, the third party API. So the query that we have is Jurassic Park. Um, it gets a content. So we can grab and get the title from the first one. We can do an insert here. So if there's any um, official title that the API uh, returns to us, then we can use that title. Um, we can add the year here. So we're gonna go and look for the year See if, it, if there's a year here. It doesn't look like it. So we're going to go and move over to the release date. Seems that's available. And then for the poster URL, we're going to be inserting this poster path that we have here. OK, one thing that I need to add here is if, for instance, you, you query the API and it doesn't return anything, um, there's no result. So we're going to have a problem with updating the records because that record doesn't exist. So we can take a step further and add a, a branch over here, right? So we can basically check whether the HTTP request that was done returns um, a 200 or it returns something. So the content. So if you can see here, there's an array of contents, zero, to whatever, so it's an index space. So what we can do is just check the first one and we can use the condition of if it existing, right? So we can add end condition or end core condition, but we're gonna stick with the first one and we're just gonna make sure that it's true. So if it's true, then we can proceed and update uh, the, the AI table uh, record. All right, so now we're ready to uh, do a testing on this. It looks like it's, it's uh, successful. So we're going to go back to the um, movies data sheet here. It looks like it actually updated. So uh, the image uh, poster URL, but actually we can change this one to be, I think there's like a URL here. So you can hit OK, and this is going to convert that type. So once we get the URL here, you can just click on it. Open a new tab, and I'll show you the Jurassic Park um, actual poster. All right, so it looks like it works as expected. Um, now we're ready to up, um, publish this and ready for a new record to come in so we can update. So to be inserted, now we can go ahead and test it. Um, 
we can go ahead and put a new over here, the future, and just hit enter. Or go to a different record ID, and we're just gonna wait. Okay, after a few minutes, it actually updated the record. So you can see over here, as the poster URL and the, the release date. Um, for the year, you can pretty much grab it from the release date. You can do some coding and stuff like that. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so if you have anything that you want me to make a video on, please leave a comment or message, and I'll see you again next time.